Hey there, Mike McCallowitz. How are you today? I'm doing well, Michelle. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for having hey, me. You're, you're super welcome. I, I have to mention first before we even get started, I dig the tree. I dig all the books behind you. I love it. I feel like we all get to know each other so much better when we see like, right, all the stuff behind yeah, you. Yeah, you get some cool. office. Yeah, I found that to be a really cool kind of bookshelf. I also have my life's mission right there to eradicate us from poverty, my guitar. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, let's, let's attack that right now because I think um, for the Maid Service Success Summit, obviously sponsored by Zen Maid, which is why we're here, I think it's a really cool time to talk about cleaning companies. I know in this moment of COVID and the response that a lot of cleaning companies have had, they've seen some changes to their business models. And I think that there's a lot of people in that sort of diving deep into their business, fixing issues, fixing problems, retooling, rehiring, really getting cool things happening. And I think the, the summit that we're a part of here is really helping, you know, companies be able to c contribute to their business in a new way this year. So um, I want to talk about, because I mean, clearly I'm a fan, right? I've been reading your book. In fact, it's got lots of pink on it, my oh, color, which you would be very happy with. I'm, I'm on brand. And I actually was so excited about this one part that I actually think I might have broken the spine. So <laughs> we, I know, I know. I'm tough on everything, and I, I didn't mean to be, but I was so excited about this one component of the book, and I really want to dive into that. Yeah. So um, let's talk about the sale before the sale. Um, as a CSR company, we put remote CSRs in home service and field service businesses all the time. And we're often tasked to sell over the phone, as I'm sure you yeah. know, especially in this time, that connection is super important to be made right at, right at the beginning on the phone. We're always asked to sell value, not price, right? And how can cleaning companies, do you think, have their office staff bring value by using the sale before the sale techniques on each phone call? Like dive in and let us know how we can do that, please. Yeah, and you know, the interesting thing, we we, we just had our house cleaned yesterday. Um, oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it is it's it is amazing. What, what I found so interesting is what I judge to be an amazing result, I think would be different than my neighbor or different than uh, anyone um, that's getting house cleaning services because we all have our own sure. judgment. I, I think we judge uh, the 1%, that first thing we notice. You know, sure. if, if you say you buy a, a new car or something, some people say, I, you know, it's red. I got the car I want, <laughs> or, or it's got a big engine, or, oh, it's so fuel efficient. So we all have a different judgment that we put extraordinary significance in. So for me, the reason the house, why I noticed was clean is we just returned from vacation. We were able, thank God, to, to take a vacation during COVID. And we had our house cleaned. And the importance was we wanted to return to an orderly home. And coming home, it was a vacation from the vacation. Yeah. What we can do in that pre-sales call is ask our customer, what frustrates you about the house? Not, you know, do you want your house clean? Yes or no. Because we sure. have a presumption, was, what frustrates you? Oh, it's those dirty windows. Every time I look at that dirty window, it frustrates me. Or the things are out of place. Or just the bathroom. It just, it, it just has a smell to it that I don't yeah. like. Whatever. <laughs> While you could do your whole process, it's those small elements that they identify that we need to emphasize. It, it's yeah. it's the, it making that bathroom have a nice lemon smell. It's it's having mm -hmm. that one window clean that actually the client's going to put an extraordinary significance in, and that's where we need to pay attention. So when we do that sale, make a note of those three or four things that are the leverage you have over yeah. that relationship. The other thing to realize too is people buy experience not because they want the benefit of a clean house, it's the benefit that benefit provides. So a clean house to me gives me comfort returning from vacation. That's a trigger moment for me. Every time you know Mike leaves house, when he returns, it's his comfort in his own home. For other people, maybe guests visiting. You know, I've guests come over, not in COVID so much, but maybe I've guests come over frequently. And when they come over, I want to impress them. Okay, so that's a sure. trigger sure. point for me. Maybe it, it's uh, it's when um, it's just you know every Friday night I, I have a staycation that goes until Saturday. I'm just want to be home and chilling, and that's a significant thing. We need to work around it. Just one last example. I have a, a our lawn is maintained by the lawn guy, and I'm like, you've really been doing a, a pretty poor job. He's like, what? Well, we're still coming every week. We're doing a great job. They changed from coming on Fridays to Mondays, and I didn't know that. But I make the observation on Saturdays. So the grass has grown again, ah. the trees look 
mangled. And so my <laughs> perception is they stink, even though they're doing the exact same thing. So the timing became an issue. That's an opportunity yeah. for us. When does your client place that judgment? Is it immediately after you clean or is there a certain day of the week or time of the month? Those are when we should be scheduling our cleaning around that and they'll give us a strategic advantage. Oh, it's huge. That's massive. So finding those pain points, obviously finding out what the pain versus pleasure threshold is, right? Asking really good questions and making sure that you're noting all of that for your business that you're supporting. Those are huge nuggets. Those are, those are huge. And you're yeah, right. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny. <laughs> I was working with a cleaning company and uh, they said what you, to their client, why do you need this? Or why do you want cleaning? What's important to you? And they said, we have a child who is hypersensitive to allergies or allergens Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to clean that cleaning company um, rents to them. One of the, I can't remember if it's Dyson or one of those things, but these HEPA filters in it. And they, Mm -hmm. they have a, they have it over the web with remote monitoring. And they said, listen, we will do a HEPA monitor of your uh, site. And they use a generic product that takes the Dyson product, but they can monitor their app and they can see what the HEPA filters are at. And they can wow. notify the client preemptively saying the allergen level is increasing. We think it's time for another cleaning. But the other thing wow. is now they differentiate themselves in the market. They're not just your, your generic, generic yeah. commoditized you know, cleaner. Now they are specializing as an allergenic cleaner and they were able to dictate much higher premiums without changing much of their offering. Yeah. Oh, that's huge. It's huge. So we alluded to the sale before the sale and the five steps. Let me just roll through them real quick with you so I can make sure the listeners have it. Those who haven't purchased the book yet. So the first one we talked about was pain and pleasure or making that connection. How can a cleaning business, other than asking all those wonderful empathetic questions, taking really good notes, how else can they connect with their customers in this time since they can't really go and do quotes in the home anymore? Yeah. So people like people like them. Look yeah. for commonalities. <laughs> and I don't care what industry you're in, you got to look for commonalities. Before you call a client, get to know that client as best as you can. And the beautiful thing is with social media, Facebook, you can Google anyone's name and get some details. If, if you can identify the, the college they went to, for example, and that's important to them, even though you may not go to that college, referencing that saying, hey, I went to Virginia Tech. Hey, uh, oh, or, that. hey, I'm in Northern Virginia. That's awesome. I didn't uh, know you were a Virginia Tech kid. That's there awesome. we, there you go. Go Hokies. So this, see, here's the funny it. thing, right? It happened right now. That was not pre-recorded yep. or pre-planned. No, I didn't I'm, know. <laughs> we, we just found a commonality bond. So the affinity I have toward you has subconsciously or consciously elevated. And hopefully the same is elevated for you because we found a common bond. Sure. Finding common bonds is the greatest way to win over opportunities. So say that you, when they went to college saying um, on the call, Hey, uh, uh, when I was, before I called you, I noticed on Facebook that you are a Virginia tech uh, graduate. Are you a fan? Do you have some memorabilia there that you wanted to make sure is clean? Now I'm like, yeah, I got the yeah. old helmet. Uh, you know, the collector's edition. Actually, Love if you it. see, I'm going to show you. Uh-oh. Oh, you I do. Like sports and college. This is my lacrosse <laughs> helmet from Virginia Tech. Nice. Very nice. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So you could, I would, I would make note of that. And now I have an affinity towards you because you, you put significance in something. I like you more because you notice something that I like. That's the key. So this little preemptive research you do seeking commonalities or something points of significance for me will definitely elevate you in, in my choices. Beautiful. Okay. So then number two comes the agreement which is, you know, a contract, a receipt, you call it in the book, a handshake. Tell me a little bit about the agreement. Yeah, the agreement is, it comprises not just like, hey, we're going to do services for you. There's also an expectation for the client in return. Often that is missed out. It's like, okay, we're going to clean your house. We'll be there on Friday. It's $200 or whatever. Mm -hmm. See you then. The agreement's got to be the expectation for the client. How should they prepare? Saying, listen, uh, a lot of families, when, when we come you may not believe this, but they clean before the cleaner comes because they oh, don't no. want to embarrass them. I totally right? do. I'm yeah. guilty. Yeah, right. And by the way, every family does that or most do. So the cool thing is yeah. now you have like this insight. That they're like, oh my God, you know a secret about me. Uh, it actually builds affinity. So saying, listen, you may not be you, but some families clean before you arrive. We ask that you don't clean. We want to see your house in its normal state so we can take it from normal state to perfect state. That's our job. Um, but we expect you to, to be available. So when we get there, we need you there. We're going to arrive at two o'clock. 
on the time, you know, or 2.15, we need you to be there. If you're not there, we have to dispatch someone else. So you set an expectation for their presence. The second thing is you say, um, you know, in regards to the payment, we require full payment at the conclusion of the job. What we're going to do is we're going to have a checklist. This is what we went through. We're going to review everything, make sure you're 100% satisfied. And we need immediate payment on that spot. So you actually set the expectations. So an agreement isn't just what you're doing. It's how this relationship is going to work. And all the, the elements are checklisted out. That facilitates a great, um, a great relationship. And by being so clear on what you expect from the client, the client's uh, uh, feelings about you actually are mm-hmm. elevated because there's clarity, there's no confusion. When you can, Don Miller says this, he's the author of Story Brand. When you confuse, <laughs> you lose. So if, if the customer doesn't have clear expectations and they don't know, for example, that they have money for you when you uh, arrive and they say, oh, I'll probably be billed and I'll pay 30 days later. But then you say, well, where's our money? Yeah. Even though that's what you expected, since they didn't know, they're now yeah. confused and it, they start getting disappointed in you. So very clear expectations for Huge. both sides. Hugely important. And a software platform can help set those expectations totally. by dripping out, dripping out education right before you visit. And hey, this is what will happen and this is how we get paid and this is what happen next. And you can set up those things automatically to drip to the customer to kind of prepare them for that first time clean, which is essentially the first date, right? <laughs> it's totally the first date. And you know, clear yeah. communication is probably one of the most overlooked customer service mechanisms in the world and the most effective. Uh, yeah. We have, uh, I'm in New Jersey, uh, our state bird is the mosquito. Uh, and so <laughs> we have mosquitoes here. So we have a mosquito control company that comes by. Excellent communication. I get a text the day before saying we're coming tomorrow between nine and, and uh, 11, but we'll tell mm-hmm. you as the time approaches our exact arrival. Uh, then I get a text um, from the technician coming saying, hey, I'm going to be there in 20 minutes, you know, you know 920 or whatever. Perfect, um, yeah. Just as a reminder, make sure your dog's inside uh, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Excellent communication. And when they're done, they say that the, the, uh, the work has been done. Uh, another mm-hmm. contractor, they come into the house, sometimes when I'm not there, they come in with a camera and they put it in and they start broadcasting over their site, go to a private page. And they say, oh. <laughs> the most important thing is when we're servicing your home that we want you to know your home is secure and safe. And so we, you can observe our workers at work. We're not wandering around your house. These little things are powerful differentiators that the majority of cleaners, other people don't do, will make you stand out, will allow you to dictate a premium. Huge, huge. Okay, so then uh, third is the deliverable, how you deliver that. And I think you covered that kind of with some of those stories, but tell me a little bit more about the deliverable and how yeah, we can one get little that dialed left. in. It's yeah, called please. under promise over deliver. Do Ooh. something extra that other cleaners don't do. Don't talk about it. Just do, do it. it. How many cleaners leave a chocolate mint, a creme de mint on pillows uh, like a hotel does? I never see that. Oh Not my many. gosh, would you stand out? How about leaving a little card folded over saying, I had the privilege of cleaning your house today. Hope you have the best night's rest tonight or something like Beautiful. that. Um, or maybe a single flower, a beautiful rose is left uh, on the table, something that distinguishes you, but don't set as an expectation, send it, as, do it as an over deliverable. And, and the thing is you can now randomize this and it's a yeah. treat. It's a surprise for me. Mm-hmm. It's funny. People are not impressed by what they're expecting. So if you say we're going to arrive at nine o'clock, your house will be beautifully clean and you arrive at nine, my house will be beautifully clean. I'm like, good. You did your job. Great. You yeah. leave that rose there. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It's the small unexpected thing that wins the customer over. Now you, you gotta you gotta deliver on your promises, but you gotta also under promise on something, meaning deliver something that's unexpected and now blow them away. Awesome. That's so good. Okay, and then uh, number four, the collection. So this is how we get paid. We talked about this a bit, but talk about the parameters, amounts agreed upon, and how that collection part goes. Yeah, so here here's the collection. You you gotta set the, the money parameters up front but you don't want to be commoditized. So you first, in this, that pre-sales call, you're, you know, you're pointing out your differentiators. And I would say um, to the customer, this is always in the sales call saying, are you looking for a cheap solution or are you looking for an optimized solution? We are a company that's optimized hmm. around uh, hyperallergenic you know, situations or in, uh, in setting up a home for display or presentation when you're selling a house or whatever your specialty is that you define. And then you say, um, the, our fee is, or the investment is, and you give your price upfront. 
Mm -hmm. Then when it comes to the collections, because not pre-sales call, you told them, you know, what they're going to pay and when they're going to pay it. You simply say now, now's a transaction, you know, get ready, make it, you know, process it now, but make it easy. So, you know, sometimes you go to someone they're like, Oh, uh, I'm sorry. We don't take checks. Uh, it's got to either be, yeah. it can't be cash. You know, it's got to have a credit card and I don't have a credit card on me. It's confusing. So give multiple payment options, but set those expectations on early. Um, but give me multiple payment options. I can swipe a card or I can pay cash or something like that. Um, the second thing is look at payment plans or installment plans where people can pay a monthly fee. There's this wonderful mm -hmm. all-inclusive thing too when there's an emergency or something like that. What if you, instead of charging $200 per clean, say we have a $450 monthly all-inclusive clean fee, which includes two visits plus uh, emergency monitoring uh like that, that example I gave you with the Dyson hypo, hypoallergenic sure. monitor, you know, give us some unique term that will dispatch someone to clean, do some spot cleaning or something like that. When people get onto an installment plan, here's the interesting thing. They often become less demanding of the expectation. Mm -hmm. So our fear is so like, oh my true. God, they're gonna call us all the time. They'll actually probably <laughs> call us less. But the other thing is now you can start optimizing yourselves. You can start saying, listen, um, I can keep this place the cleanest if I actually arrive, uh, you know, on a Friday and do it because now I'm observing how they use their house and so forth. And I can schedule and coordinate around other clients I'm going to, to shorten the distance of travel because travel is an expense. You got idle time. So now I can start doing pockets and locations and you can start optimizing it. So a pay payment plan or a monthly recurring thing that gives you actually flexibility may be another way to collect effectively huge. I, it, we work with a lot of landscapers and I have a lot of landscaping clients that are moving to that method, right? That, that kind of, they're pivoting to that form of service where they include seasonal color, they include holiday lighting, they include all yes. of these things throughout the entire year, right? So they can really budget their staff and their teams and they know that money's coming in so they don't have to cut back in the winter. And it's been explosive in the landscape industry doing that monthly method. And we just promise that we're going to keep your grass cut and your house looking good. And that's it. How many times we come is irrelevant to you, but we're just going to do it. That's our prop promise. And the most interesting thing too, is now it's about, uh, the, you, you align your wins. So I used to be in the computer industry. We used to do what's called break fix. So someone's computer broke, we would go and fix it. And we charge for the time we spent fixing it. But sure. honestly, the more time it took me to fix something, the better it was for me financially, but the client wants it fixed faster and cheaper. Yeah. So we are actually at odds of what optimal is and we kind of settle in the middle. So no one's really winning. When you have these flat fees saying, I'll fix your computer, whatever is the issue for a hundred dollars, but you gotta pay me a hundred dollars a month, even if there's no issues, we're both motivated to have as few issues as possible. Exactly. They have an expected expenditure and my job is to make sure that computer's humming along all the time. Now with cleaning, there's an expected expenditure for the client and uh, our motivation is to keep the place as clean as possible and minimize mm -hmm. the need for recleaning. Exactly. Both no, it's so good. No, it's huge. Our tech guys on a stipend like that every month, like on a yeah. you know membership, and it's perfect. It's right. I don't ever feel like it's an it's an out of my way expense when he comes to solve something for us technologically. Right. It's awesome. So I love it. Um, and then so wrapping it all up is the conclusion. So once everything's kind of done, how do you put a beautiful bow on it? And I know in cleaning companies, these guys really live and breathe recurring services like we just talked about. How can we move them after, as the part of the conclusion to becoming one of those recurring customers? Yeah. So the conclusion of any service should be a recap of the service. I, I am uh, surprised how many businesses complete a service, they do an extraordinary job and you don't hear from them again. There yeah. should be a follow-up after that saying, here's what we accomplished at your house. Uh, you know, the, the next day saying, you know, we, we clean this. Um, you kind of like, you, if you ever get your car checked uh, and there's a check, you know, we checked the windshield, a checklist sure. that arrives. Mm -hmm. That gave me confidence because when a service is done, I see the elements that I noticed, the clean window, uh, the bathroom yeah. smells lemony but mm -hmm. I don't see the hundred things that were done. So I start diminishing the value of other services. So at the conclusion, we send the checklist and said, hey, we did our 75 point check. Mm -hmm. um, here's, here's what we, we noticed and clean. The second thing is there's upsell opportunities here saying too, hey, we noticed that you're accumulating a lot of pet hair uh, you know, around the bed and so forth. Uh, we suggest a, a, a deep clean that we do where we actually lift the bed and go under it. 
once a month to remove that because it can collect bacteria and actually even you can get like ticks and stuff like that. Like there's an opportunity through that. Um, and then the last thing, which I already mentioned though, is those, those pleasant little surprises, the little, that extra roads or something, that is a great way to put a bow tie on an experience. Um, one last thing is, is also consider starting clubs or groups. I call them buyers groups. And um, this is something that restaurants actually do very well. If you ever go to a restaurant and they give you like a, a punch card, like oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Use, you mm-hmm. know, 10 per- well, there was a study done that if you, you know, you punch out 10, you get the free pizza, we'll say. Yeah. It's actually better to have a punch card that has 12 spots, but when you give the person a card, you punch out two when you give it to them as the initial thing, mm. and then they still have to fill out 10. So the reward is exactly the same, but it gets momentum. This is a great mm. preemptive move to move toward conclusion faster. You know, every 12 cleanings or whatever uh, will give you a free cleaning. But what you do is when you arrive on that first visit, punch out two and say, hey, we wanted to get you started a little bit faster. And now they've already made progress. And now at the conclusion of every uh, cleaning, another one gets punched out. You know, you can do this with software too. It doesn't have to be a, a, a physical. Sure. But another one gets punched out and you start seeing the momentum. So the conclusion actually shows momentum toward a bigger result. When they get that mm-hmm. last one, they get a free cleaning and you start the process again. So that's another way to keep the momentum going at the conclusion. Huge, huge. Well, that is awesome. I got a ton of, ton of, ton of information, not only from reading the book, but now just from spending this time with you, um, walking us through these five steps. I think this can be a really good customer service framework that you can start to hang customer service on and make it part of what each one of your, you know, members of your team accomplishes. Let them know these steps, let them do the sale before the sale and understand that each part of the process is super important to supporting every other step, right? Yeah, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and the nice thing is, is you can start with just one and then let the next one come. Not immediately. You don't have to master all five steps. But let's start at the beginning, get that first one going, and then add and add. And you will start seeing positive change immediately. The biggest awesome. element is it differentiates you. Yeah. So many companies don't do any of these steps. The first time you do the first one, you'll start standing out. And then you add the second technique and then the third and you'll be so different in the market. You can dictate a premium. You'll have happier clients than ever. Uh, and uh, your service, you know, should start growing pretty quickly because you'll have a reputation of excellence. Yeah, that's awesome. So what we're going to do is let you tell us how to get a hold of the book. And then I know for everybody at the summit, you wanted to do a free evaluator tool for their business. Explain that part for us. Please. Yeah, great. I, I put it all in one spot, <laughs> Michelle. It's, it's at <laughs> fixthisnext.com. What I have is a free evaluator there. When you go to the site, it's a, it'll be a big red button saying, take the evaluation. It's free. What it'll do, it, it will ask you about 25 questions. Overall, it takes about five minutes. But it'll pinpoint in your business what the current weak spot is, the one thing that your business needs from you the most. And there's no downloads or anything. It immediately puts on the screen, and you know what to yeah. take action on enhancing your business. There's also, I put in there uh, details to get the book if you want to check it out. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been incredible. Thank you. I, I promise I will not break your book much more. All <laughs> you're of my you're welcome of to break as many as you wish. <laughs> Michelle, thank it's you been for great. this. Great. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll talk to you very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.